Buck Rogers in the 25th century is a quintessential science fiction series that captivated audiences in the late 70s and early 80s with its blend of space-age adventure, futuristic technology, and compelling characters. In this video, we'll take a look at some behind-the-scenes fun about the show, including a secret that Erin Gray kept while she was filming. Origin The character of Buck Rogers first appeared in a novella titled Armageddon 2419 AD, written by Philip Francis Nolan. Published in the August 1928 issue of Amazing Stories magazine, the story introduced Anthony Buck Rogers, a World War I veteran who finds himself in the 25th century after being trapped in a coal mine and exposed to radioactive gas. This novella laid the foundation for the character's future adventures. Earlier Adaptations Before the 1979 series, Buck Rogers had already made a significant cultural impact. In 1929, the character was adapted into a daily syndicated newspaper comic strip, which became immensely popular and ran for decades. This was followed by a radio series in the 30s, which was one of the first science fiction programs on radio. And in 1939, Universal Pictures released a Buck Rogers serial film, shown in theaters in weekly installments. Pilot Movie Before becoming a TV series, Buck Rogers in the 25th century was introduced as a feature film in March of 1979. The film's success at the box office led to its adaptation into a series. When it was greenlit, the film was re-edited and split into the first few episodes of the show. Star Wars Influence The late 70s saw a resurgence in interest in space and science fiction, largely due to the unprecedented success of George Lucas's Star Wars in 1977. Eager to capitalize on the renewed enthusiasm for space-themed entertainment, TV networks and studios were on the lookout for properties that could capture a similar audience. Buck Rogers in the 25th century was one such property, green-lit in the wake of Star Wars, with the show's visuals, its effects, and even its marketing heavily influenced by the space opera aesthetic popularized by Lucas's film. Tweaky's voice. Tweaky, the diminutive robot sidekick of Buck Rogers, became one of the show's most recognizable characters, in no small part due to his unique voice. Behind this voice was none other than Mel Blanc, often referred to as the man of a thousand voices. Blanc was the talent behind many of the iconic characters, including Bugs Bunny, Daffy Duck, and Porky Pig. His distinctive beady 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 catchphrase for Tweaky added a touch of humor and charm to the series. Costume Changes The series underwent a noticeable shift in its visual style between its two seasons, and this was particularly evident in the costumes. In the first season, the characters, especially Wilma Deering, often wore form-fitting spandex outfits reflective of late 70s fashion sensibilities. But by the second season, the costumes became more varied and intricate moving away from the spandex-centric designs. The change was part of a broader effort to revamp the show and give it a fresh look, possibly in response to feedback or to align more closely with the evolving sci-fi aesthetics. Set Reuse TV productions often operate under tight budgets, leading to creative solutions for set design and props. Buck Rogers in the 25th century was no exception. Some of the sets and props from the 1978 Battlestar Galactica series, another Glenn A. Larson production, found a second life in Buck Rogers. This recycling not only saved on production costs, but also maintained a consistent visual style, as both shows shared a similar space opera theme. Theme music The show's memorable and catchy theme music was the work of composer Stu Phillips, Phillips, a prolific composer for television, also crafted the music for the original Battlestar Galactica series. The Buck Rogers theme, with its futuristic and upbeat tone, set the mood for the show and became one of its most recognizable elements. Cancellation After its debut, Buck Rogers in the 25th century enjoyed a successful first season. However, by the second season, the show underwent significant changes 
including a shift in setting from a post-apocalyptic Earth to deep space adventures. These changes, combined with competition from other programs and evolving audience tastes, led to declining ratings. As a result, the series was not renewed for a third season. Gil Gerard's Influence Gil Gerard, who played Buck Rogers, was not just a passive actor on set. As the series progressed, he became increasingly involved in its creative direction. Gerard had strong opinions about the show's storytelling and character development. By the second season, his influence was so pronounced, he played a role in getting the show's original producer, John Mantley, replaced. Gerard's vision was to have more serious storytelling and character depth, moving away from the campier elements of the first season. Directorial Debut Gerard, beyond his leading role, took on additional responsibilities during the show's run. He made his directorial debut with the episode titled The Golden Man. This episode, which aired during the second season, centered on a young man with the ability to heal and his importance to two warring factions. Guest Stars Buck Rogers in the 25th century featured an array of guest stars throughout its run. Notable appearances included Jamie Lee Curtis, who was on the brink of becoming a major Hollywood star. She appeared in the episode Unchained Woman. Other renowned actors like Frank Gorshin, best known for his role as the Riddler in Batman, and Peter Graves, famous for Mission Impossible, also guest starred. Novelizations The world of Buck Rogers in the 25th century extended beyond the television screen. The series inspired several novelizations that delved deeper into the universe. These books, often written by established science fiction authors, expanded on the show's storylines, characters, and settings. Comic books In addition to novelizations, the series also ventured into the realm of comic books. Gold Key Comics, a major comic book publisher of the era, released a comic book series based on the show. These comics allowed for more visual and narrative explorations of the series' themes, characters, and adventures. Hawk's Ship Introduced in the second season, Hawk became a significant character, acting both as an ally and a foil to Buck Rogers. His ship was distinctively designed to resemble a bird in flight, mirroring Hawk's own bird-like features and heritage. The ship's design, with sleek wings and avian aesthetics, was a departure from the more conventional spacecraft designs in the series. Aaron Gray Aaron Gray, who played Colonel Wilma Deering, was not just a staple of the series, but also went on to have a successful career in Hollywood. Beyond her acting roles, she transitioned into the world of talent management. Gray became a respected talent agent, representing actors and actresses and guiding their careers. Erin also revealed later on that she was fairly flippant about auditioning for the role. She said of the phone call about a screen test, quote, I'm sorry, I just finished a four to six week shoot and this is my last night and you want me to screen test for Buck Rogers? I haven't read a script. I know nothing about this project. Please let me go home and we can do this another day. And she guessed that perhaps it was her nonchalant, if not confrontational attitude about the role that eventually helped her get it. Now it's time to hear from you. Which one of these facts about Buck Rogers was the most surprising to hear? Let us know in the comments section below.